There's no doubt, locomotives get people's attention. They're big, powerful, and loud. But the cargo they pull can be just as interesting and even more massive. The railroads call these loads high and wides, and I think you can understand why. The book The Railroad, What It Is, What It Does defines high and wide as a term referring to the outside dimensions of a car or open top load that exceed the normal clearances on the route to be traveled. Now, the first high and wide we're going to check out seems like something straight out of the Lionel catalog. A huge Caterpillar bulldozer and what looks like chassis for two big Komatsu dump trucks. While the loads here are really cool, the flat cars they're riding on are pretty standard. Here are some of the mechanical designations given to flat cars by the Association of American Railroads. FM, General Service. FB, Bulkhead Flat Car. FBC, Center Beam Flat Car. And FD, Depressed Center Flat Car. Okay, the next car we're gonna look at falls into the FD category. I caught this one going across Sweetwater Creek in Austell, Georgia. But before that, I got some photos of it as it left Atlanta. You can see it's got six trucks with a total of 12 axles. This thing is owned by Casgro Rail Corporation. Casgro builds and supplies heavy duty rail cars. Now, I did my best to determine the load limit of the cars I'm about to show you based on what was written on their sides. This one said it had a load limit of 680,000 pounds. Now, let's look at a stationary car that's slightly smaller. This one only has four trucks and eight axles. It's also owned by Casgro. It looked like it had a load limit of more than 386,000 pounds. Both of these were carrying Siemens transformers. There are two design features worth noting on cars like this. First, all those trucks help spread out the weight these cars carry. And second, the depressed center deck allows for more vertical clearance for tall loads, like these transformers. The tag on the transformer on the smaller Casgro car said it weighed more than 267,000 pounds and was destined for a Georgia power facility. I could not make out the information on the transformer on the bigger car. Next up, an even bigger depressed center flat car, and this one's got hydraulics. If you want to move something big, the railroad can probably handle it. This train is carrying a heat exchanger made by Thermal Engineering International. But sometimes, loads are even bigger than this one. So big, they require this rare piece of rolling stock. It's used to haul power generating turbines. The reporting marks on here tell us who owns it. GEGX, General Electric Gas Turbine. Today, it's sitting near CSX's Halsey Yard in Atlanta, Georgia. But the turbines this thing carries are made about 145 miles away in Greenville, South Carolina. There's no doubt, this car can handle some serious tonnage. It weighs in at 473,000 pounds, and its load limit, 786,000 pounds. Just for comparison, a GE Evolution Series locomotive like this one weighs around 430,000 pounds. Everything about this thing is heavy duty. It's got four trucks on each end and a grand total of 16 axles. The car is also articulated, helping it negotiate curves and check out the car's deck. You need some serious hardware to make sure a turbine stays secure. There's also a hydraulic system here. My understanding is that the car can shift itself from side to side. This definitely falls into the high and wide category when it's loaded. In fact, the cargo it carries is so specialized, it travels with its own crew. They ride in this classic red caboose to monitor the load. The caboose belongs to Casgro Rail Corporation. It's unusual to see a red caboose on a Class 1 railroad, so it's fitting that this one is hooked up to such an unusual piece of rolling stock. Both cars make quite an impression on anyone who sees them and show the amazing engineering the railroad and its customers use to get the job done. Okay, I've shown you some giant pieces of rolling stock, but there's one car that's eluded me. Now, cars like these rank as some of the biggest in the world, and since I haven't seen the real thing, well, we're going to take a look at this model. This is called a Schnabel car. It's about as specialized as you can get. It falls under the American Association of Railroads LS mechanical designation. 
Here, the load basically becomes part of the car and is suspended between the car's two ends. This thing has controls for hydraulics that allow the crew to lift and shift the car so it can avoid obstacles. There are also several pivot points, allowing it to get around curves. This HO scale representation has a total of 32 axles, 16 on each end of the car. On the side of the model, it says it has a load limit of 1,660,000 pounds. This car is hauling a giant retort cylinder. It takes a lot of planning to move Schnabel cars. They usually have to be run at reduced speeds when loaded, and obstacles like signals sometimes have to be temporarily moved so they can pass. Now, I don't think there's an actual CEBX802 out there, but this model is a good representation of what a Schnabel car is and does. So, what's the largest rail car in the world? Well, it's a little bigger than this one. WECX801 was built by Casgrove for the Westinghouse Electric Corporation. It has 18 trucks, 36 axles, and a load limit exceeding 1,000 tons. Now, this car was involved in an incident in 2014, so I'm not exactly sure what its status is right now. Anyway, while we're on the topic of large loads and specialized equipment, let's go back in time and take a look at an early version of this design. During World War II, Schnabel cars were used to transport these huge German self-propelled siege mortars. Now, Schnabel means beak in German, and I guess they thought the two parts of these cars resembled a bird's beak. All right, the last cars we're gonna look at show us how the aviation industry uses the railroad to move its specialized parts. I'm not exactly sure what was in these cars, but if you look at the reporting marks on the first one, you can see it's associated with a pretty major customer. TBCX indicates this car, or at least the top part of it, belongs to Boeing. A little internet research says its numbers indicate the type of plane it's carrying parts for, so this one would have components for a 767. The car behind that one had Canadian national marks and looked like a larger version of the Boeing equipment. The car I showed you at the beginning of this video also looked a lot like these, but I couldn't find much information about it. The box had TTVX reporting marks, meaning it belongs to the trailer train company. I've seen some pretty interesting high and wides over the years, but I certainly haven't seen everything. One day, I'd really like to record one of the trains that transports Boeing 737 fuselages. Anyway, tell me about some of the interesting loads you've seen on the rails down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. All right, this Schnabel car is probably the most difficult model I've ever recorded. I mean, look at this, I can barely even get it in the frame. So you can see I've kind of rearranged my living room because I needed a big space to do this. And uh, take a look at the length of this car, the actual length, not the, uh, the model length or the prototypical length. I've got a tape measure here and it actually is a little bit over 32 inches long. So just really a total beast. And uh, I've got all my lights powered on here and, you know, working to light this model. And it's just been a real challenge getting this thing recorded. So hopefully it was worthwhile and you guys enjoyed it.